Happy to be here. I actually have a class right now, but obviously this is more important. <laughs> I have a quick question. How many people here have ever been to Africa? Just by show your hands. Wow. It's a, more, a little more than I expected. But so today I'm going to give you a little bit of insight into Africa. But we're going to talk about two topics that is very relevant to all of you who are here today, which is entrepreneurship and digitization. You see, something very interesting is happening on this continent that accounts for 15% of the world population. First thing, the population is very young. At least 400 million people are under the age of 14. Think about that. I'll give you a more specific example. I'm from a country called Guinea, which is located in West Africa. Now, Guinea has a population of about 12 million people. Now, but the interesting stat here is that 60% of that population is under the age of 25. Think about that for a minute. I mean, when I hear these figures, I can't help but think, how in the world are we supposed to secure a great future for all these kids? How can we make sure that they're going to contribute to the growth of that economy? I feel like every single president should be thinking about that right now. Now going forward, we need to realize how can we help this youth. Now the second thing is that broadband capacity has quadrupled in the last five years. The internet penetration has reached about 25%. So as I stand here today, there's at least 300 million people with access to the internet. I mean, that's as huge as the US, as the US population. I mean, and it's also huge compared to five years ago when barely 100 million people had access. Well, guess what? This is only a quarter of the people. I mean, we have a lot of people, too many people. <laughs> I mean, the average family size in the US is what? Two and a half people, three? Now, in Africa, every parent's create their starting five, just like a basketball team. <laughs> I mean, that's how you make sure that at least one of your child would be successful. I mean, it's true. <laughs> now, despite this increase in internet usage, the trend to social media and digital platforms is no different among our youth. So as more people come online, this is creating something called a digital economy. Now, going forward, as the average income increases, as more people come online, and as the cost of data, like we know, it keeps decreasing, the value of this digital economy is just going to keep shooting up. McKinsey had a report with the title, Lions Go Digital. Now, in this report, they discussed the potential, the internet transformative potential in Africa. Now, they said that in 2013, the internet contributed $18 billion to Africa's GDP, which is great. But the part that got me excited is that by 2025, they expect the internet to contribute $300 billion to that economy. I mean, that is incredible growth in just a little over 10 years. Now, but you have to understand, this is different than what we're used to. It's not like, for example, natural resources. Governments can't hold it, issue permits for it, or nationalize it like we often hear about. In order to tap into this digital economy, you require innovation, creativity, but most importantly, it will require entrepreneurship. You see, this is not going to come from the top. This is, can only come from all those young people. So we must teach them how to code, and we must teach them how to, uh, we must equip them with the skills they will need to create solutions for their communities in a world dominated by digitization. So how, how do we accomplish this? That's the question I want to answer here today. How can we monetize Africa's digital economy? As being someone who is a scholar, someone who has started a digital venture, I believe there's three important things. And we're going to talk about them. The first thing is education. Now, I'm going to share an experience with you here is that uh, like Chris mentioned, I'm a part of a program called Tiger. 
Now in Tiger, what we do is commercialize innovations from PhD students here on campus. So what we do in this class is so cool because they just give us the basics of creating a venture, and it's up to us to take this product to the marketplace. So for two years, we work with the same people, we come up with a business plan, and we compete in venture competitions for seed capital, and eventually we license the technology from Georgia Tech to take this to the market as a real business. Now, this experience with Tiger had me think, what if something like this was introduced to me sooner? Just think about the time you spent in high school. What if you had a class where all you did would work on a project of your choice? What if all you did was work on something that you care about? You can get to work with whoever you want. You can work alone if you want, if you want to <laughs> keep all the, 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 the profits. I mean, this could be for profits or non-profit. You have the support of the institution, and you have the support of your peers. You can continue with this project all through high school, even through college. Now, if you feel like your project doesn't have legs, you can drop it and join someone else's project or just start a new one. You see, that's what I'm talking about here. If Africa wants to tap into this digital economy, we need an education system that also nurtures entrepreneurs. 40% of college graduates in Nigeria today can't find a job. And that's a common theme in many countries. I mean, it makes absolutely no sense to keep producing professionals for jobs that do not exist. We must flip the model. We need an education system that only, not only nurtures entrepreneurs, but gives them the tools they will need to develop the private sector of those economies. Now, the second thing we will need is business incubators. Now, I'm going to also share a story here. I have a startup called Africa 360. And what we're doing is developing a digital platform where content creators filmmakers, and media outlets can control the distribution of their work online and also monetize from it. Now, last year I had the opportunity to go through the TIP program by the Tony Elomelo Foundation. This is the biggest business incubator in Africa to date. Last year was their first run. Now, Mr. Tony Elomelo himself is a very wealthy and very successful business leader from Nigeria. He understand how important our entrepreneurship is to the future of the continent. So he taught us a very simple but very important economic philosophy. And this philosophy says that the power to transform the continent rests in the hands of the private sector. And I really believe this. So for three months, we went through this program. I got to learn. For, my, for the first time, I got formal training in entrepreneurship despite having a bachelor's degree in business. And they plan to do this for the next 10 years, and by the end, nurture over 10,000 entrepreneurs. They're just doing a, a great, a, a, a great work out there. But we need more bit startup incubators like this at the local level in every single country. Now I'm going to turn to the last point that I wanted to make. The third thing we'll need to monetize this digital economy is partners. And that's where all of you here can come in. You see, a partner could be an investor. A partner could be, it could be a joint venture. Or it could be any expert who can exchange their knowledge and capabilities. You see, America gives a lot of aid to Africa every year. I mean, and we appreciate America for that. I mean, you guys are very generous. But that's not what we want from our generation. And that's not what we want from the next generation. We want partners. So all you great scientists and engineers here, if you really want to solve a big problem, if you really want to take part in the next biggest digital transformation, I encourage you to pursue partnerships in Africa. Because what you will find out, and I repeat, what you will find out is that Africa's problems are also its opportunities. Now, on our end, we need to mobilize 
from funds from wealthy people in the forms of venture capital. We also need our successful corporations to create corporate venture funds. Now I'm gonna end with this. There's, there's a great quote that I heard somewhere and I, and I often use it because I really believe that this is crucial and very relevant to this moment in Africa. And he says that it takes only one committed generation to transform a nation. Only one. Now, in the case of my homeland, Guinea, I firmly believe that this will be our generation. Thank you.